ओम शांति द साइंटिफिक फील्ड हैज बीन कंडक्टिंग रिसर्च ऑन हाउ द ह्यूमन थॉट्स कैन इन्फ्लुएंस हिस सराउंडिंग्स द इनिमेट ऑब्जेक्ट्स एंड द लिविंग क्रिएचर्स अराउंड ह्यूमन्स इन वन रिसर्च दे हैव चेक द मॉलिकुलर स्ट्रक्चर दैट हैज ट्रांसफॉर्म्ड by the human thoughts that is the molecular structure of water so they uh, watch the molecular transformation the water undergoes under various circumstances they have collected water from a polluted river and when they observe the molecular structure it uh, it didn't look so nice it was um it was uh, it did not have any regular structure it was very irregular it was very nasty to look and uh, a group was offering prayer in front of the po- front of that polluted river and after the offering of the prayer they collected some water from the same river and observed the molecular structure and to everybody's surprise this molecular structure of the water has reached a very beautiful regular geometrical shape so it was more like a star or some kind of flower it was so beautiful to look at and similarly they have exposed water uh, in between two speakers that was playing beethoven's music and they observed the change in molecular structure um and again they conducted similar experiment with different songs and for each song the water is capable of changing its structure uh so it was very amazing it and somehow water does respond to the um uh, immediate environment and in this particular example it is really very surprising to note that they have placed water in a glass and below the glass they have placed a paper with a written note saying that i love you and they just left the note under that cup of water overnight and in the next day the molecular structure of that water has reached a very beautiful shape it was somewhat like a flower and again they placed under a cup of water a note saying that i got i get very irritated on you i'm going to kill you they left this piece of note overnight and on the next day when they observed the molecular structure it it was very awkward uh, it doesn't have any uh, pleasant shape it was very awkward and so water it takes cue from its environment that's what all these experiments denote and they conducted similar experiments with plants uh with humans they use an instrument called polygraph that is 
to detect whether or not a person is telling the truth it's a light detector in common terms and the method with which the light detector works is they connect some electrodes to the human and the text and the uh, the change in his capa in in his skin's capacity to conduct el electricity will be represented by graph this is how they basically detect whether or not the person is lying so somehow a scientist is struck with an idea of conducting the similar experiment with a plant so he attached the electrode to the plant and he started observing s changes and by the end of the day he immediately got an idea of burning the leaf of the plant and to his surprise the moment he thought of fire in his head the graph was just um pulsating like anything it was that is when he was totally amazed at the result so then he started conducting different experiment because he initially wanted to test what the plant is doing but uh to his surprise the plant was actually detecting what he was doing what he was thinking so that's when he realized that plant is actually observing him so he asked the girl to pluck the cabbage from that plant and uh she was holding knife about the cabbage till then there was no big difference in that graph but when she start to cut the cabbage it was vibrating as if there is some kind of um emergency it was uh, it's more like trembling with fear and when she is given another cabbage that was plucked from a different plant when she was cutting it there was no change in that plant and again he conducted another experiment asking a girl to damage a nearby plant so when she was damaging that plant when she was breaking all the branches of that plant the plant that has the electrodes attached it started showing uh the emergency signal that is the graph was oscillating um very violently and after that she left the room and after few hours when she entered the same room again the uh signal sent by that plant is oscillating very much um that is it says that there is something uh very dangerous is going to occur so it means that plant has sense has actually identified the particular person who has damaged the neighboring plant and it's actually trembling with fear that whether the girl is going to damage this plant in this time so that's why it sends all those signals again they conducted another experiment uh with a guy and he a person was connected to that instrument through electrodes similarly a plant in that same room it is also connected to the the to another instrument using electrodes and this person is actually watching a television screen and in that mm, a video clip containing uh scenes that stimulate all kind of emotions in humans so he was watching all these scenes and um these scenes that is that stimulates love 
that stimulates uh, fear and the sin that stimulates sexual feelings and particularly when he was watching the scene that arose sexual interest the plant uh, actually the um, graph uh, that is drawn by the signal sent by plant is oscillating like anything similarly the uh, instrument that is connected to this person also stim uh, was oscillating similarly so when those two graphs were compared it's more or less the similar pattern so whatever he thinks that signal is received by the plant so all these experiments reveal one thing that is whatever we think it affects the environment it affects the plants it affects even the non-living elements like water air, everything but it is very natural to uh, see if somebody is actually uh, scolding you yelling at you in a very loud tone it is very natural to provoke to get provoked by someone who is scolding at you so you either get angry or, or you, uh, you get hurt this is the law of nature because whatever uh, that is every action has the equal reaction right that's the law of karma but in Brahma Kumaris the God the one God that is being called as Heavenly Father Allah or Shiva by different religions that particular God through Brahma Kumaris is teaching not to go along with nature but to win the nature to conquer nature that is what God is teaching through Raja Yoga and he says uh, and before we go in detail about what God says about the power of human thoughts let's take a brief look at what God is teaching through Brahma Kumaris God says that there is a time cycle called Kalpa which consists of 5000 years. The In this 5000 years the first 2500 years is heaven and the next 2500 years is hell. Both heaven and hell uh, they exist in the same earth. So we are now living in hell and uh, towards the end of this kalpa that is the last hundred years of this of each kalpa god comes he enters uh, uh, he enters an old man and he start giving knowledge that is required to enter heaven god says in heaven angels exist they are humans but still they do have divine qualities they have the power to do anything with their power of thought they can make the sky to rain or they can stop raining it it all happen they can do all these things with their mind so they have that power the same angels after several rebirths when they enter hell they lose that power to control these five elements so that's why they start getting all the pain and sufferings and God in the last hundred years says you rule the world you rule the universe you rule the sky uh, for the first 2500 years and the reason you lose 
that power in the next 2500 years is you start believing that you are this perishable body that's why the five senses the mind the intellect they uh, you have become slaves to all these five senses and the mind and the intellect but when you are in heaven you have perfect control over all these five senses intellect mind and this nature because you did not consider yourself as the perishable body when you were in heaven but you considered yourself as the imperishable soul it shines like a tiny star in between your eyebrows that's why it is custom in India to have a star shaped symbol in between the eyebrows uh, especially Indian girls do wear them so as long as you remember that you are the soul that controls this body you will retain the power to rule this world the moment you forget that you are the soul that controls this body from that moment whatever was controlled by you they start control you that is what God says but uh, so the basic thing God teaches is whenever you are soul conscious you are ruling the world whenever you become body conscious the world rules you that's why it appears like hell to us right now so so by soul conscious it means um, remembering every second that we are the soul shining like a star and we are different from this body we, are, we have just entered this body temporarily to act and we will leave this body and we will take another body and again another body so it goes on and on unstoppable so the soul doesn't destroy only the body gets destroyed but it is not very easy to become soul conscious just like that because for the past 2500 years we uh, we have recorded in our soul as sanskar that we are this body so the bodily feelings forms a dominant part of that recording in that soul the bodily feelings are those five vices lust anger greed attachment and ego and so these dominate all our thoughts that's why we suffer so we have to conquer over these five voices so the only way to do that is to realize yourself as a soul and then start remembering our God he is actually the father of all souls and not the body that's why he is called supreme soul and just as a child resembles his father our heavenly father that is the God resembles us the souls these souls are shining like star in between our eyebrows and the God actually we are living in this visible world our corporeal world above this there are two worlds the one above this corporeal world is subtle world which is which which is comprised of light and the world above it is called soul world that's where we souls have come from we are coming from there and we take birth after birth for the uh, for one kalpa and towards the end of the kalpa we again go back there and from there again we enter the next kalpa and we will be 
taking birth after birth so it's a non-stop cycle so whatever happens in one kalpa it repeats kalpa after kalpa nothing is going to be new which means if you have watched this video 5000 years back then you'll be probably watching this now and in the next two 5000 years on the very same day you will be doing the same thing so nothing changes in any kalpa but our father he is called Allah Shiva or heavenly father by three famous religions and this God this father he doesn't take birth but he enters an old man in the last hundred years and he start giving this knowledge so God says and see the abode of God is also a light world but it is uh, composed of a golden reddish orange light there won't be day or night it will be all the time in it always look like a golden reddish light area so how so thinking of God in a right manner is actually what we call yoga so this uh, only God can reveal himself so he says kids just like you I'm also your soul and I'm not bigger or smaller than you I'm just like you but you are in between your eyebrows but since I have not taken any birth he is always here shining like a star so to remember him what we need to do is we have to realize ourselves as a star first in between our eyebrows and then you will have to visualize a uh, golden red or orange colored area and in the middle of it if a tiny star shines how does it look that's how our father looks like so when you visualize that with the faith that he is the father of all the souls the the more you spend time in thinking of God like this you will start feeling a pulsating sensation in between your eyebrows what happens is when you think of God he also in turn thinks of us so the more he thinks of us the more this sun's cause that is the bodily feeling recordings get uh, um, destroyed gets washed away in other words our sins get washed away and our souls become pure again so when the soul becomes pure it regains its power to rule the whole world that's how God changes this world into heaven just by creating pure thoughts by destroying the impure thoughts so by this yoga your soul gets pure but um, by attending Brahma Kumari classes daily so the classes will be for one hour daily both in the morning and evening so by listening to something called Murli they uh, read this these are the direct words of God he is talking to us he is still talking so he will be talking till the last hundred years um, 80 years have already passed so there is approximately only 20 years so after that even if you want to see God he wouldn't be here so before that please go there and meet our imperishable father and get all the properties the divine properties directly from him and God in a recent Vani um, this is called Vani or Murli or Gita so 
in the one dated 31st May 2015 God says that you souls have the authority to change any soul into whatever you desire we are more like beggars because we once ruled the world when it when this earth was heaven it was filled with buildings built out of gold every single stone used to build the buildings of heaven were golden stones so once we ruled that world we were true rich people but now no matter how rich you are now compared to the properties that you had when you were in heaven we are more like beggars and god says by your power of thought you can change any beggar into a rich person you have that power because you are getting the knowledge directly from god and god says you are every single second and every single thought has the enormous power by using that power you can change anything into whatever you desire but the reason why it is impossible for you to get that power that amount of power now is you are wasting that power of thought by thinking about wasteful things and by spending your precious time into speaking unwanted things and that's why your thoughts has not gained the amount of power it is supposed to occur by now and that's what god says about the power of thought here so see if somebody gets angry but uh, in the beginning of this video i have said that scientific researchers have revealed that even plants can pick up the signals and respond if you are angry the plant is going to send the signal as a reaction to each of your action that is nature but we humans are taught directly by god through brahma kumaras that you should not be the slaves of nature the nature should become slaves for you because you are direct sons and daughters of god and god says when somebody is angry at you he is trying to put that put that influence into you and start uh, making you to get angry as well but you should conquer that by your power of peace whenever somebody is yelling at you not only that you are not influenced by the signal sent by him instead you are also sending your peaceful signal to him to the extent that he even forgets that he is in an angry mood so he should be surrounded by the peace that was sent by you that's what god says and you can do that god says always uh make your mind busy with positive thoughts the pleasant thoughts always be busy in sending positive signals to the environment in sending peaceful signals in sending blissful signals that's why god has adapted you as his direct children so for that you should be aware that you should never consume negative or undesirable thoughts you should not engage yourself in unwanted action through that your power of thought gets driven away so you have to protect yourself by pure thoughts
and doing yoga helps you achieve that now we are going to do a yoga uh, a type of yoga that's going to teach you how to uh, how to protect yourself from the harsh environment what we are going to do now is you have to visualize yourself as a star here from that you are going to s uh, through your power of thought you are going to separate from this body and you are going to reach that uh, you are going to reach this place now we are here in this corporal world from here you have to separate yourself as a soul and by your power of thought you are going to reach here as a star and by visualizing yourself as a star and also visualizing our father as a star and by spending some time with our beloved father we are going to get energy from him we are going to get the positive feelings from him the positive emotions from him okay um, to begin with you can uh, do this yoga with your eyes closed once you get uh, good practice of this then you can do it with your eyes open you can do it wh um, whenever you want so you can do it while somebody is speaking to you you can do it while somebody is calling at you you can do it you can be in yogic state whenever you want the other person will be totally unaware of what you are doing because you will have your eyes open so to begin with you can have your eyes closed mm, you can sit comfortably it doesn't matter in what posture you sit it uh, the only thing that matters is the state of mind close your eyes Om Shanti I am a peaceful soul that shines like a shining star in between my eyebrows I am not this perishable body I am this imperishable soul that controls this body I this soul that sees through this body I am the soul that sees through the eyes I am the soul that listens through the ears I am the one that controls this body I am seeing myself as a star with my power of thought I am moving away from this body above this body I am reaching a place filled with orange colored light I am seeing myself as a star and I am looking at my surroundings everything is filled with golden reddish light rays it was so peaceful it is so sweet it's very amazing I am looking for my father my father God Shiva Allah Heavenly Father is also shining like a very beautiful star right before me I'm seeing him in surprise I'm watching my father after 5,000 years I'm forgetting myself I'm forgetting the whole world 
I immerse myself in the devotion of love, my father. I am visualizing myself as a star and also I am saying my father as a star. And I am saying this as a single scene in my mind and I am busy watching this for the next 10 seconds. I'm a star saying another star. Just like the if someone switch on the torch light right before my eyes, the same feeling I get when my father Heavenly Father shines like a star right before me and He is sending the powerful light signal that is being received by me, the soul. My Father is devotion of love and by receiving the love sent by God, I myself have become devotion of love. My Father is sending me the strength of peace. He is filling me with peacefulness. And I am now taking the form of peace. My father is the ocean of happiness. And I am immersing in that ocean of happiness and I am changing my form into happiness. I am that blissfulness. Whatever I take from my Divine Father, I am sending the same downwards towards the earth. I am the peaceful soul. The peacefulness is being sent by me as the blue colored rays towards the earth. Whoever comes in contact with the peace that I sent, they become peaceful. The peacefulness that I sent from above, it reaches the earth, it covers the entire planet, it covers the entire ocean. Every single living creature on this planet experience true divine peace. I'm changing my form into blissfulness. I'm sending my blissfulness as an yellow colored race. This yellow colored blissful race reaches the earth. Everybody who comes in contact with the blissfulness, they become blissful as well. The plants become blissful. The animals that come into contact with my blissfulness, they themselves become blissful. I am a blissful soul. Now I am bidding goodbye to my most beloved father and I am reaching the earth. I am entering this human body and now I am shining like a star in between my eyebrows.
and I am seeing myself as a star. I am slowly opening my eyes and I am seeing the things through the eyes but still my mind is seeing myself as a shining star. Whatever I received from my Divine Father, I am spreading those happiness, blissfulness, peacefulness around me all the time. Om Shanti Om Shanti This is what we practice all the time. If somebody who is very angry comes in front of you and start using provoking words, you detach your self as a soul from this body and you reach the supreme soul world and you start receiving powers from God and you start sending signal around you then the person who is supposed to provoke you he becomes peaceful himself and by this you are dominating the situation this is how God changes this hell into heaven. God is using us, the kids, as an instrument in this time cycle. Om Shanti.